Calling International Rescue. Calling International Rescue. I need assistance. I need the Thunderbirds. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to LMM. And if you're enjoying the kind of thing that's coming up on the channel today, then the links to our social media is coming up on the screen now. Today, I've returned to the Apedale Railway, home of the Mosley Railway Trust, home of 100 narrow gauge engines, because they gave me a call and said, Laurie, would you like to come and drive Thunderbird 4? But first, a word from our sponsor, the Foxfield Railway. Coming up on May the 20th and the 21st at the Foxfield Railway is the War Wheels event, featuring reenactors, military vehicles, showing the living history of our past. There's also period entertainment, steam train rides, the miniature railway in operation, and back by popular demand, the reopening of the station bar the Foxfield Arms. It's only £3 per adult or two for a fiver and kids are just a quid on the gate. With train tickets being sold separately, tickets purchased online before the event include a ride on the railway. It promises to be a really good event. <sighs> See you later. And remember to sign up to the newsletter. All who do before May the 1st will be entered into a competition to win tickets for the Naughty 100 event. And now, roll the titles for your regularly scheduled viewing. Yeah, so this isn't quite what I was expecting. Having grown up on a staple of Thunderbirds and Captain Scarlet, this is not the vehicle I was thinking of. Admittedly, the clue should have been come to the Apedale Railway and let's not go to the sea to drive a small submersible and the fact we're at a railway. But this is indeed Thunderbird 4. It is a rather tiny G series motor rail simplex and this marks one of the very last designs that simplex did this is kind of like the end of motor rail simplex and well it's interesting isn't it it is firstly absolutely tiny in proportions unlike almost anything i've ever seen the proportions of cab to engine are even more extreme than my own 48 it's just it's a box with a cab isn't it it's a holy box with a cab and of course I think the most important thing to get out of the way is if you've come here because you're wondering what the connection is with this and Thunderbirds this is known as Thunderbird 4 because it is both tiny and yellow but what really cemented its name was during an AGM where the Deutz failed so they sent the petrol tin turtle the fully armored one not the one I drove down to rescue it and that then promptly failed as well the only thing in traffic was the little motor rail and nobody expected it to actually be able to pull them but they went ah what the hell let's give it a try and surprised everybody when the little thing managed to recover the two stricken engines the whole length of the line thus being a thunderbird locomotive so they decided to officially name it thunderbird 4. so if you've come here on false pretenses i'm sorry this is motor rail simplex 104063 of 1976 and it's a bit strange. Alan Keith acquired motor rail in the early 80s. So this is very much one of the last ones they would have done. And although it shares a lot of similarities, particularly the way that you control it with the earlier models of motor rail, this one is really quite different to the motor rail that we all know and love. Particularly, it's got a body around here, which is very unlike, well, most other things. It's, it's distinctive, isn't it? And, the best way I can describe this is it is a box. It is a box with teeny tiny wheels and axle boxes down there. It's just, there are some locomotives that you look at and go, this is quite strange and it looks unusual, but it's got a kind of charm to it and a kind of personality and you go, oh yeah, it kind of all comes together and it works. I don't think it should work, but it all kind of works and makes something that's quite aesthetically pleasing. This does not. This is just a yellow box. It's, it's, it looks, it's too squat and it's too high and it's too narrow. It's all just very weird. I, I don't actually think I like how it looks. I, I want 
almost say that it's ugly. And I know that's coming from me. It certainly looks very industrial and looks very much like it came out of industry and, and comes down to your typical little industrial locomotive. But for me, I think it's just, this is too high. It just looks really, really weird, doesn't it? And then this whole side panel that's just grill, also very, very strange. It just, it's just weird. This little thing is a two and a quarter ton G series motor rail simplex. And one of the most striking features from the front end and the thing that really throws your eye off aesthetically is the height of the buffer beam here. This is like a three inch thick plate. It's massive. Normally we kind of expect it's gonna finish somewhere here just above the knuckler coupling. But the way it comes up here, it's just weird. I just. It really throws off. If you have something this big and coming up here, you normally expect the engine behind it to be of suitably large proportions. But this isn't. It's just it's very strange in the way the body then drops down the side next door to it. It's all very off-putting to the eye. The thing I really do like, though, are these little sanders here, which have a cover to make them waterproof. You lift that up and then you can open your sander. But putting this back and having the bit over the top means your water will run off and not go into your sand, keeping it dry. And that's a really nice little nifty thing that it's acquired during its life. This thing was delivered new to Seven Trent Water Authority, going to their Newstead Works in Staffordshire. And this was a sewage treatment plant. So that's what this thing would have spent its life is moving around sewage and sludge and that kind of wonderful stuff. And it stayed with them, but changed where it actually was in 1980 and early 1981, going to the Blythe Valley Works. And then it went back to Newstead again. Although it didn't stay there long, in the same year it went to Tunstall Works, where it spent its remaining five years with Seven Trent Water Authority. They then sold it, and it went to a slightly different owner. That's not who you'd expect. It went to a van hire company. And you may be thinking, oh, well, were they branching out into locomotive hire as well as van hire? Not quite. The van hire company wanted the trailer that this was parked on. And it was kind of a, a buy one get one free in order to get the trailer you had to remove the locomotive and once the van hire company had acquired this thing it was removed from the trailer and plunked down in their yard and the trailer was pushed into active service and this was acquired for preservation the following year by the old kiln light railway so at the old kiln railway safe in preservation so clearly it moved here in preservation you might think not so in 1988, Alan Keith was looking for more locomotives and this thing was surplus to its requirements at the old kiln. And immediately, Alan Keith had got a buyer for it because it went to ERS Mining at Whittle Colliery in Northumberland. And we're not really sure what it did there, to be honest. We assume that it didn't go down the mine, it just worked above ground, pulling wagons out from the entrance of the mine and marshalling stuff around. But that bit of history is kind of lost. It definitely did something though, and it was used there. By 1992, it had changed ownership again, going to the tiny tramway company in Corfmulland in Dorset. And frankly, I have no idea what they did or why they needed it. Not a clue. But by 1996, it was finished for the second time in, in industry and had moved to the Cadeby Light Railway to be safe in preservation. And then of course, after Cadeby Light Railway finished, it came here to the Apedale Light Railway. So with the history covered, let's have a look at its power plant because this is slightly unusual, which is in here. Now, originally this was fitted with an a unusual power plant. This was fitted with a Curloscar RA2 21 horsepower engine, but this didn't last its entire life. By the time the locomotive arrived at KB, this had been replaced with a listed D series engine, which isn't the correct thing for it. So when restoration was undertaken, it was fitted with a Deutz engine, which is pretty similar to the thing it would have been fitted with to try and bring it back to a, a near as we can do original condition mainly because the curlo scar engine is relatively difficult to obtain and deutsches are well a lot easier it is an air cooled engine which means there is no radiator on this and that explains all the grill the whole way around and then it goes to simplex's standard manual transmission the most notable thing on this however is the fact that it doesn't have the standard simplex gearbox normally you've got a high gear and a low gear this thing doesn't it just has forward and backwards and throttle meaning it's rather simplified and makes operation a lot easier and to drive it smoothly is easier because for those of us who aren't brilliant at it you always get the of gears as you try to switch from low gear to high gear 
obviously people who know what they're doing with motor rails can get around that but um, I'm not so good at it and as I say most people using it all in industry mm, probably wouldn't care about the gearbox so much now with the engine looked at this is the part of the video where normally we get into the cab and show you the controls uh, there is one small and tiny issue with this it is a very small cab and getting into it is not by any means a graceful feat and I am a long way away from being graceful on the best days so it kind of go like this and then squeeze yourself once you're in it's quite comfortable I'm very aware of the fact that none of my windows around me open so that's not brilliant but for controls it's pretty simple we have forward and reverse here with forward being that way and reverse being that way we have a throttle here a horn there we have the start button yes this has been fitted with our electric start down there and i have my battery discharge light next door to me we have an engine oil pressure gauge there and we have a battery amp gauge to see how much electricity we're putting back into the batteries then this thing here is for our sanders to activate the sanders and then we have a clutch down there and an engine stop tucked down here in a totally inaccessible place to stop the engine while you're sitting on it next door to me of course is my handbrake we have sanders in the cab with us and i have this piece of wood because to access the sanders there's been cut holes in the cab so to eliminate the draft a piece of wood has been put in a very handy and kind kind of thing to do it's quite comfortable as well this seat is quite nice visibility out the back is pretty good visibility out the front i've just got a massive great engine in my way so i have no idea where the front buffer is and i can't see the other major problem with this in my opinion is that the reverser is here now if i try to get out of the cab what's likely to happen is as i shuffle forward if i've left it running because i can't pull the pull stop while i'm sat there i'm actually just going to do that and now i've knocked it into gear and it will shunt off in that direction with me going oh no i've also disassembled the seat as i came out of it it's really not brilliant and i cannot for a second believe that there was not some kind of repeated incident in industry where this thing careered off on its own going i'm on an adventure today that said however now i'm back outside let's go through the prep which is ludicrously easy first we open up the engine bay second we reach here and grab the coupling pin and take the top off the fuel tank we deposit the pin inside the fuel tank and bring it out which reveals a ooh, a shockingly low amount of diesel but enough to get us started then we'll have to go find some more replace the coupling pin and reach in i really don't like how high this is because it's right into my armpit it's i'm so used to navigation engines like being a difficult thing to get at but this just feels unnecessarily high this feels like a bad bit of design admittedly of course the original engine may be a lot easier to get to but i don't like it how it is uh, we look to see if we've got the liquid dinosaur on it and we do so we can replace that next stage is that we shot the engine bonnet we walk back to the cab where you reach to the side of the seat where the battery isolator is we twist that round and we push the start button i love easy to prep locomotives even the axle boxes they're sealed i don't need to do them it's brilliant simplex now i have driven now possibly more motor rail simplexes than almost anything else the only thing i can think i may have driven more are russians but it's a very familiar thing to get into and i'm very relaxed in it now this one once you're in it it's quite cozy getting in it however is a bit of a challenge other locomotives of this size and kind of dimensions normally have a sliding window or something that opens to give you a bit of extra room 
you can actually get into it, whereas this one, it doesn't. Now that I'm sat in it though, it's very comfortable. I have a nice padded seat. I've got the engine bonnet coming here and a little piece here so I can rest my arms. It is a later one. And it obviously kind of shows in the, how the whole thing works. It's a later locomotive. There had to be a slightly better things. You had to have a bit more of a more comfortable seat. You had to have a roof over your head. And I'm quite happy in here. I don't want to get out because getting out is a real fast. But I'm happy now I'm in. It's lovely, and I do love these engines. They're just so easy to operate. This one particularly, I mean, this, as it has no high-low range, it's just got forward and backwards. You just sit into gear and it goes. It's just a wonderfully simple. It really does feel like a piece of plant that's been designed for people who are not so gifted when it comes to machines. This is go, and it goes. It's wonderful. as well. Got the whistle board here and we have a horn on this, which is quite satisfying. It's just, it's quite nice. It's the kind of thing that I feel that if I ever had my own private two foot gauge railway, this is the kind of thing that I would be wanting in my own railway. It's small, it's easy to use, it's simple. that just it makes me chuckle another blast for the crossing here Simplexes they have. But for what I want to do today, it's been perfect. 
I genuinely really, really like this. I really, really think it's good. Uh, I just, it looks, it's, okay, it's a bit boxy, isn't it? But once you read it, it just feels proper. The ride isn't that bad either, in all fairness. It's, I was expecting it to be worse, but it, yes, it bounces over the joints of the rails and everything, but it, it is not as bad as some that I've been on. Although I suspect a fair amount of that may well be just the fact that I have a nice cushioned seat underneath me. And it, on these kind of things, that really does make all the difference. I think this would be deeply unpleasant. I mean, I do have the big open side where the camera is, but these windows not opening, I feel it would be just a, I've been inside a greenhouse, it would be sweltering here and there's no way to get any airflow in to cool yourself down. And that little air-cooled engine would be sweltering as well. So, yeah, that's, that's not something that I have to deal with at the moment, but something I feel that I may, uh, on a particularly hot day, I don't think that would be too good. And, it's part of the problem with a cab that's kind of hasn't got any other facilities. I've, I miss opening windows. us to the end of this video looking at the Motorrail Simplex Thunderbird form and I'll be honest even though it isn't the actual Thunderbird form my inner child has been quite excited by the concept that it is Thunderbird 4 all day and that's that's kind of made up a lot of well this thing's shortcoming it certainly is a very industrial little engine and I have really enjoyed taking it out I don't think I want to do it every day but for the attempt of going for a drive and moving around the skips it's been lovely. It is very small, but I have rather enjoyed myself and it looks absolutely superb on front of the skips here at the Apedale Railway. 
And to them, a super massive thank you for inviting us along and letting us take this out of the day, and to the Mosley Railway Trust who operates it. If you want more information on the Trust and the Ape Dale Railway, there's a link to their website in the video description. And that includes when the next end will be open, and if you want to be a volunteer and learn how to drive this yourself, then they're always looking for more volunteers, and information on how to get involved is also in the video description. And it turns out, I'm now a volunteer here as well, so if you volunteer here, maybe we'll meet on one day. Hope to see you here. And with that, hope you've enjoyed it guys. Let us know in the comments. How disappointed were you that this wasn't the actual Thunderbird form? And thanks for watching. If you have enjoyed this one, how about clicking over there somewhere for one of the other railways that we visited, or down there for another locomotive we've done here at the Ape Railway. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you next time. Beep.